This is the Vegapool Captain 1200 power station. And what an absolute beast it is. This is a proper unit. I, I can't even lift that properly. So Vegapool has sent this to me to review. I've reviewed a few power stations and stuff in the past, like the Jackery, etc. Um, but what's really interesting about this is it has a few new features that some of the others don't have, and we'll get into that in a minute. But first, let's go over the specs. So how much power has it got? What can it do? So it's got a 1280 watt hour, so 1.2 kilowatt hour battery inside. It's lithium phosphate, um, LIFE PO4. That's good, that's safe, you know, it's not gonna explode or do anything nasty. Um, 3,500 cycles they're quoting as well, which is pretty nice. So this has got a host of different outputs as normal with these power stations. You've got USB, power delivery, five volt and 12 volt. Um, you've got a 12 volt kind of, you know, car socket, so you can plug in stuff that would normally run off your car's accessory socket and you've got an inverter as well. Now the inverter is actually capable of obviously creating you know mains voltage but it's capable of 1200 watts so that's a little bit more than your sort of average um, you know power station at this kind of level. Um, now the thing about this is it's supposed to surge a bit higher it actually says surge at 2400 watts we're going to be testing that out and we'll see what it actually can deliver but it's neat it's got some good output options and it'll even charge your phone on the top of it. I'm loving that, look, seven watts output, it's not gonna wreck my battery, it's just a nice keeping the phone charged. So what are these cool new features I was talking about that make this a bit different to the other power banks out there? Well, number one, this can be fast charged at up to 800 watts. So basically you haven't got to do anything, all you do is you just plug your mains lead into here, uh, into the charge socket here, and it's got a built-in charger and it will charge at 800 watts, which is gonna get you, you know, like 80% capacity in probably like, you know, one and a half hours, something like that. And this is a quite a big power bank, so that's quite good um, in terms of how long it's taking to charge it up, because one of the downsides of these power banks is, yeah, most of the time you probably have to leave them overnight to charge, never a great idea. But yeah, usually they're pretty slow. Like for example, this one would take 14 hours, it says in the instructions here, to charge from a car socket. So if you plugged it into your car, it's gonna take 14 hours to fully charge. And that's gonna be, I mean, if you, if you just left it in the boot, it'd be fine just charging every time you went out. But realistically, you know, that's not gonna be completely practical. So it's really nice to see some kind of fast charge effort on a power bank of this size, really useful. The second thing that's really cool about this is it can actually act as a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply. So you can plug your computers and other sensitive stuff into this and then the other end plugged into the wall like you would normally have your charge lead into the main socket. And if the mains goes, then it will switch over to battery power and supposedly keep everything on. Now it does say it doesn't feature zero microsecond um, switching. It will take 10 milliseconds. But again, we're gonna test that and see you know, how reliable that is. But again, nice feature to see on something like this. Now you can also charge this from solar panels. Vegapool have got their own solar panels, which they sell for this and their other um, power banks. But you can also charge, you know, use any solar panel you want. Um, and you do that by connecting it to this and and connector here. Now you are limited at 400 watts on the input and I think about 60 volts it says in the instructions here. Um, where are we? 60, 56 volts at 12 amps. So it's 400 watts maximum and you have to do it by using this Anderson connector here. And you will need a, a, an adapter lead if you're gonna put your own panels on because solar panels use MC4 connectors normally and so you'd need an adapter. You don't get that with the power bank. I have seen that with other ones, such as the Jackery, you do get that lead in the box, but they're not that expensive. It's a shame you can't go to 800 watts on the solar though, that would have been pretty cool. Now there's one more thing that I think is really useful about this power bank. I just have to remove my phone. I'll have to turn it around to show you. So we have here a parallel socket. You can connect two of these together to give you 2,400 watts of continuous power. That's cool. And when they actually said to me, do you want to review this? I said, yeah, send me two and I'll try and charge the Twizy on it. That'd be a cool video, but only one's turned up. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? In fairness, if you were going to try and charge an electric vehicle off of one of these or two of these, then you're really not going to get that much range, um, you know, because it's maximum is going to be 2.4 kilowatt hours for two of these together. Um, how many miles that's going to get you, I don't know, but it's not going to be a huge amount. And are you really going to have two of these expensive units sitting in the boot waiting for that day that might never come when you run out of power? Um, in the Twizy, it might have been interesting to see because you do get quite a bit of, um, quite a few miles um, per kilowatt hour because it's lighter and smaller. But yeah, it's probably not the most practical thing in the world. 
On electric cars, if you can turn down the power output of your charging from, from a main, so maybe you could reduce this to like a thousand watts or something, you could probably trickle from one of these in an absolute emergency, but I wouldn't buy one of these just for charging your electric car as a range extender. It's not gonna be a viable thing. So let's have a closer look at the device and we can do some tests as well, quite excited about that. Um, we've got a nice screen on here, which shows you the output of the different, so you've got input here and output basically. And then we've actually got like a, a runtime indicator here, which is nice. Now you can see that showing 99 hours. So I think at the moment, what we got on, we've literally got just this USB thing. And one of the things about power banks like this is there's always a drain um, when you turn the inverter on. And this is one of the gripes that I have about these is the inverter doesn't sort of have like a kind of a very low power standby state. They tend to always just be on in a, and they're pulling like hundreds, hundred, couple of hundred milliamps or something like that. Um, which means that if you're using this to like power something like maybe like lights or something like that in a garage or something remotely, you end up having to leave your inverter on and then that will just flatten the battery over, you know, over a couple of days, unless you've got solar plugged in or some other sort of charging system plugged into it. So it is, it is a bit of a problem. My DIY systems, um, that I've made use inverters that have like a, a kind of standby feature, a very, very low power standby feature. So it almost like checks the input or checks something's plugged into it every kind of, you know, 10, 20 seconds, something like that. So when you actually come and flick the lights on, it would fire up the inverter and it's not using a lot of power until that point. So something to be aware of. Anyway, I digress. We've got USB outputs here. So 18 watt USB-A and 100 watt USB-C, pretty standard these days. These are really good for you know powering all sorts of things these days now. Um, and you've got a uh, you know your your car accessory port there, and these kind of little I can't remember what they're called, but I mean they look like little coaxial plugs. But there's a specific type for these, um, and these are limited to 10 amps as well. So I don't think you can run 10 plus 10. I think it's it's 110, but I need to confirm that. So down here, you've got your charge flap and you've got a mains input. You've got a reset button here. And also we talked about that. That's the Anderson um, power pole input as well. Now, if we come around the side, this is another feature that I really like. You've got these really nice and bright and also flashing <laughs> LED lights. And it's got one on either side as well. So this this is bright, guys. I mean, these lights are really bright. If you had this in a, you know, in a tent or something like that, or you know, in an emergency situation, that's going to give you plenty of light to do what you need to do. So that's again another useful feature. Of course, on the top we've got our induction charging on the top, really nice feature. And on the back we've got our main sockets. They probably do different ones for different regions. I would have thought. Um, and that's that's the on and off button for that. So if we just turn that on. Basically, there's no kind of fans or anything spins up. Some of them do, you hear a relay. Normally these things take, I don't know, like 10 seconds to actually kick in. I think it's charging the circuitry up to um, deliver that voltage. But you've got fans in here, you can see as well, which are just behind there. I've not actually heard those come on as of yet. And then we've also got our parallel connection. You can see it's like three big connectors there and also obviously some sort of communication port as well. So now we've got the inverter on, you can see this is now saying like 20 hours. So, you know, you see what I'm saying? It's gonna, it's gonna run the battery down. Um, and this is a sort of downside to all of these things. So let's do some tests with a fan heater. 2000, it's a 2000 watt fan heater, I think. It's got three different settings, pretty common these things. Um, I've plugged it into the back. I need to turn the inverter on again. Where's the button? There it is. So the first setting, that doesn't sound good. Um, this is just literally like just the straightforward cool air blower. Um, and that's drawing 21 watts. Put it onto the first setting, which I believe is about a thousand watts. So show 960, 970 watts there. Um, pretty normal, nice bit of heat coming out of there. And then if we turn it up to the highest setting, so this will be above the rating of this power bank because it's 2000 watts and this is supposed to be 1200. Um, but it, it's supposed to burst at 2400. So if we turn this up, what happens is it will do it, 
but it's limiting because it's an inductive load it's actually reducing um, the power so you're getting more power out of it but because it's a motor and everything else it's actually kind of lowering it down I'm not sure whether that's going to be very good for this this heater and it wouldn't be good for stuff that you know doesn't isn't a resistive load but it works it doesn't trip out it doesn't do anything unsatisfactory but you'd, you'd want to have it on the thousand watt setting really just to you know so you're not um, pushing anything to its limit so there you go that works pretty nicely no errors and it just carry on doing that and i think it said something like you know 30 minutes or something for, for run time for that fan heater we're only at 32 percent charge let's give it a charge so you get a nice little accessories box in that accessory box you get a anderson um to car charging um socket plug thing there so you can plug that into your car it's going to take 14 hours if you do that um, so it might not be the best idea. You also get your country's own mains lead um, and it's nice little Vega pull strap, which is pretty cool. Um, not very long, so you might have to do it somewhere else. Touch that, don't think there's any voltage coming out of there. Run this on the extension lead and we are getting 700, 800 watts input. Look at that. Amazing. That's that's really cool. I'm excited by that. That's that's it's going the right way. You just want to be able to charge these as quick as possible. So you could maybe take some energy from one place and take it another. I i.e. just use this, you know, to nick some energy from somewhere maybe. And it's got a time here as well. So it's saying 70 minutes to fully charge, is that? Must be. That's pretty cool. Also the little UPS light has come on there as well to show that it's in it's in UPS mode automatically at the moment it's not making any sound there's no fan fan noise or anything apparently it does make a fan sound um, or the fans spin up um, as time goes on once it gets to a certain point uh, and with the app which you can download haven't tried that yet um, you can then turn down this fast charge to a lower rate so that the fans don't um, spin up so that's something interesting to try so i've just downloaded the vega pool app again you've got a log you've got to create a, an account to download or install the app never like that um, you can just log in with google so you've got to press the iot reset button then this wi-fi thing flashes up here um is it using bluetooth or is it using Wi-Fi, I think it's using Bluetooth, but Bluetooth is on. Don't know why it is not not doing anything. The fan started now, and there's a little fan notification on there. I mean, you know, it's not crazy loud. It's it's on, you can definitely tell it's on. Uh, you wouldn't want to sleep next to it, but it's, it's not, you know, crazy loud. Right, I can't figure this app out. I tried it, I've restarted it. I've gone round in a circle and it's, it's not working, so gonna have to reach out to them and see what they suggest doing that or just try it on another phone or something it doesn't even show up as a bluetooth device so who knows anyway that didn't take very long at all but about 40 minutes and we're at 86 percent so that's pretty cool um right i'm going to test the ups feature now so it's under the desk i've basically got everything plugged into it um my entire workstation of stuff um is being powered right now from it we're still charging a bit as well. It's just saying, it's only saying five minutes till it's fully charged. So that's why the fans are on. Um, and um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if there's any fans on when it's actually running. I don't think there will be because it's only 150 watts. Um, that's quite interesting. I wanted to know how much everything was, was drawing as well. I've always wondered that. So what we can do now is just simulate like a complete kind of blackout um, by switching that switch and see if everything stays on. And it has. That's amazing. It just literally seamlessly, nothing's gone off. I mean, the computer is probably the thing that I'd be most concerned whether it would switch over nicely, but, and then we restore the power. And it's back on again. Amazing, absolutely amazing. All we've got to do now is figure out some way of um, connecting solar to this and I can run the whole thing for, for free. <laughs> It's shown that my whole setup will run for nine hours like this, so I'll have nine hours of backup. I could probably extend that by turning these big lights off. Yeah, with them off now, it's gone up to 11 hours. Nice. Very, very neat, elegant solution that. I'm actually running off battery power right now, recording this. So 
Yeah, the fans are not on at the moment. They were on when it was charging. Um, we're obviously on battery power now, so there's no mains. Um, so the fans are there, and yeah, it would get on your nerves having that in the corner um, buzzing away uh, with that. So, I mean, it's only going to do it when it's charging, unless you're putting huge amounts of power, and then it probably would do it there as well. Um, but you can obviously use the app if you can get it connected to um, to reduce the the input charge rate. And then it says in the instructions that the fans are fans will be lower down. So yeah, proper impressed with the UPS feature on that. Really good. So that's protected me against any weird UK blackouts. I don't think we will get that because we haven't got a smart meter. So anyway, time will tell. We'll see how it works out. I'm sure it's going to do just fine um, sitting under there powering these videos from now on. Hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. We'll catch you next time.